All right, grade nines, I hope you all enjoyed watching or watching and listening to Langston Hughes. Thank you, ma'am. It's a pretty nice story about a teenager who's maybe starting to take a wrong turn in his life, but um, ultimately I think he is influenced by Mrs. Luella Bates Washington Jones. So we're going to do a quick little lesson here and take up some of the questions, or all of the questions actually, that uh, I had assigned to you. Let's go up to the top here. And I'm going to change up the view here so it's a little bit easier for everyone. Okay. So read the accompanying text. Thank you, ma'am, that I provided to you in a PDF and answer the following questions in complete sentences. So let's take a look. Why does the, what does the woman do to the boy after he tries to steal her purse? So after the boy tries to steal her purse, Mrs. Luella Bates Washington Jones kicks the boy square in the sitter, which means in the butt, and grabs him by the shirt, lifts him up, starts shaking him, rattling his teeth. She's shaking him so hard. She then scolds him on his attempt at theft and drags the boy home to her house. So, explain what you think the woman means when she tells the boy, when I get through with you, sir, you are going to remember Mrs. Luella Bates Washington Jones. Well, the woman tells this to the boy as she's dragging him by the shirt back to her home. He's pleading with her to let him go. So she says, you put yourself in contact with me, and if you think that contact isn't going to last a while, you got another thing coming. At this point, we know she's not going to hurt him, but rather... Her motherly instincts kick in, and she asks, why is his face so dirty? Has, has he no one to clean it for him at home, or to tell him to clean it for him? So when he replies no, she says, then it will get washed this evening. She also asks the boy if he is hungry. That should be he, sorry, my bad. Um, it is evident from the text that Mrs. Washington Jones is going to bring the boy home. Make sure he's washed up and fed. So, he will remember this as a kind thing that someone did for him, when he was not so kind to her initially. What can you infer or conclude from the details provided about Roger's home life? Well, the first indication we get that things might not be so good at home is how dirty and disheveled the boy looks. He has a dirty enough face that the woman wants to bring him home to clean him up. Um, she asked him if anyone at home, if he has anyone at home to make sure he cleans up. And he replied, no, which is like short for no, ma'am. So we get the impression that Roger either has parents that are away a lot or parents that don't really care. The fact that he's out at 11 p.m. trying to steal stuff is also a good indication that maybe things aren't too good at home. Um, next question for why doesn't Roger run out of the room when he has the chance? So Roger does not run out of the room after Mrs. Luella Bates Washington Jones lets him go because I feel at this point he knows she is not going to harm him or bring him to the cop shop or, you know, do anything ill to him. He knows at this point that, you know, maybe she's all right as well. He is likely hungry. And the prospect of dinner is there, so he has an opportunity to have a nice meal. Question five. Why does Miss Jones tell Roger about the things she wanted but could not get? So Mrs. Jones wanted to show Roger that she knew where he was coming from when he tried to snatch her purse. She's been there before. Maybe not stealing. She doesn't say that she stole. However, she does not say what bad things she did in her past because but that she wouldn't tell Roger nor God if, she, if he didn't already know from watching her. So Roger can now relate with Mrs. Jones, and that maybe she did not always have it so good. So go back, going back up to the questions, why does she tell Roger about these things? Well, she wants to relate to him uh, in a way that he probably hasn't been related to before. His parents are obviously not always in the picture, so um, as she's talking to him, you know, I wasn't always such a good person either. I'm not going to tell you what I did, but, you know, I can relate with you. I know where you're coming from. So, you know, that gives Roger a sense of trust in her and that she's not going to harm him or turn him into the cops or anything. So, 
Um, Mrs. Jones leaves her purse unattended and goes into the other room. Why? As Mrs. Jones sits with Roger and relates to him about how she has done some things in her past that are not agreeable, and she would not tell him what, she has made a connection with Roger. A connection that Roger now sees her differently and does not want to disappoint her, as he does not want her to mistrust him. So he sits where she can see him, easily, if she wants to. Which uh, brings us to the next que question, which is pretty much the same. Why does Roger slide over so he can see, so she can see him from the other room? So this is partially answered in the previous question, but Roger is now connected with Mrs. Jones and realizes that she's doing something kind for him. Um, he does not want her to mistrust him. So he sits where she can see that he has not ran off and has not touched her purse. Perhaps also that he has cleaned up and brushed his hair like she had instructed him to do so. Number eight, explain the phrase, because shoes come by devilish ways like that will burn your feet. So what Mrs. Jones means by this is that by stealing money from her to buy shoes, Roger's going to have some regret and some remorse every time he wears those blue suede shoes. The shoes will not literally burn his feet, but Mrs. Jones is making the point that possessions obtained through illegal or devilish ways are going to be not as favorable as, say, an item or possession that was earned or given to them as a gift or something. Every time you put on those shoes, you're going to think, oh, man, I robbed that lady. So, you know, that's what she's talking about, burning the feet. Every time she, he puts on the shoes, it's going to be a reminder of the ill things he's done. Number nine, the last paragraph begins with, the boy wanted to say something else but couldn't do it. What else do you think he would have liked to have been able to say besides thank you? I think Roger would have liked to say thank you for numerous things, such as not taking him to the police, feeding him dinner, getting him washed up, as well as giving him the money to buy the shoes he wanted. So thank you kind of sums up all he wanted to say, but did not know how to express. I don't know that he would have said too much more. Maybe he would have asked, would have asked to go over for dinner. Um, all right, describe the setting of the story. If you remember, the setting is the time and place. So it says right in like the first little bit that uh, it takes place at 11 o'clock. Let's see here. She has a large home with a large purse. Do, 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 do. It was about 11 o'clock at night. Lights out. Lights on. Okay, so 11 o'clock at night, right in here. Um, and the place. So it's a street, a sidewalk, where Roger tries to rob her. And then they go back to Miss Luella Bates Washington Jones' house. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is the conflicts in the story. So you are only asked to identify one kind. I've identified a couple kinds here, and I'm going to go through them. Um, so the first and most obvious one is person versus person conflicts. So the most obvious conflicts in the story is there is a literal struggle between Mrs. Jones and Roger after he tries to rob the purse from her. Um, she kicks him in the butt, grabs him up by the scruff and shakes him and then drags him. He's trying to get away, and she puts him in a half Nelson, which is his head would be right here, and she's got him squeezed in with her elbow. Um, the next type of conflict that could be here is person versus self. So there's a person versus self conflict evident in the story is Roger is obviously a troubled individual. He clearly knows stealing is not right and takes responsibility for this for his actions by going with Mrs. Jones to her house. He's suffering from some inner turmoil likely caused by absent parents who do not pay enough attention and care to their son. The last um, type of conflict is person versus society, person versus law. Explanation when Roger attempts to steal Mrs. Jones' purse, he is breaking the law. He's going against the societal norms for people. Moving down, plot the sentences on the plot graph in the order that they occur in the story. So like I said, during our short story elements, PowerPoint and stuff, the rising action is like the bulk of the story. It takes up the most room. Um, so a lot of these answers are rising action because that's what takes up the most space, the longest part of the story. So 
A, the woman gives the boy 10 bucks to buy some shoes and sends him away. That's in the conclusion. Large woman is walking alone at 11 p.m. at night. Well, that's in the introduction. Uh, the woman grabs the boy and doesn't let him go. That's rising action as they're walking to her house. Roger has to choose between running away or washing his face and staying. This is part of the rising action. The, wo the boy tries to steal the woman's purse. This could be, um, this is in the rising action. It could also be considered part of the introduction. The woman makes them suffer. I would say that would be the falling action after she's connected with them and basically tells them, I'm not going to take you to the police station. I'm just going to make you suffer. You can clean up and then get home to your family. Um, the woman tells the boy he could have asked her for the money. And I think that's like about around the climax. Because at this point, Roger's realizing like, hmm, maybe this woman isn't so bad at all. Um, the woman asks the boy about his life, rising action. The woman takes the boy to her home, rising action. So you can see there that the rising action makes up a large portion of the story. Okay. Moving along, provide two adjectives to describe the kind of person that Mrs. Luella Bates Washington Jones is. Well, she's obviously kind. Um, it's the most obvious way to describe Mrs. Jones as she does not turn Roger into the police, but instead takes him home. She makes sure he gets cleaned up. She makes him dinner. She talks to him about how she has done some regrettable things as well. And she ultimately gives him the money he needs to buy the shoes he wants. Um, another adjective is compassionate. I would list Mrs. Jones as compassionate as she sits with Roger and talks to him about how she has done some things in her life that she will not repeat to him, nor God, unless God has seen them from watching her. So by doing this, she's showing Roger that everyone makes mistakes, and she's trying to be relatable to Roger so he understands that life goes on, but to make better decisions. She also comments on how... Shoes got by devilish ways will burn your feet, which is a comment on how Roger needs to be earning the things he wants because he will have regret and remorse from stealing. It will not be as rewarding to steal things. And then the theme, last question here, number 13, in a few sentences explain what you think the main idea or lesson in the story. So Hughes is making a point about being kind to people, even strangers. We all have our own stories. At this, as this is shown when Mrs. Jones tells Roger about her past and she is asking about his present, he may not have anyone at home, but Mrs. Jones makes sure Roger is cleaned up and fed with some money and she sends him on his way. Mrs. Jones also makes sure that Roger has learned his lesson before she sends him on his way. She says, you ain't going to steal from nobody else. So the main point, I think, in the story is compassion, forgiveness, kindness that's why i wanted you to like you know think back to a time that you've been kind for someone or went out of your way to be kind or helpful for to maybe a stranger so um with that we're done with thank you ma'am that is the ending of the questions um if you have any questions on taking up this answer then shoot me a message on edsby and um yeah we'll be moving on thank you